Tenants and advocates of San Francisco are upset at a landlord who took their tenant to housing court because that tenant owed them $8,000 and they expect them to house the tenant for free. I'm Tony and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today. And once again, it's coming out of San Francisco, California. Now, obviously I love reading these stories about San Francisco because it is the worst case scenario for landlords who, you know, when we're talking about losing your property rights, it is the worst case scenario for socialism. And it shows you exactly what they want to have happen all throughout the rest of the country. They're just in an advanced stage. And I'm hoping to just knock it down, destroy it, eliminate it, and so that it never reaches like places where I invest and where I live, okay? So this is a, a bad story and it's really talking about how this evil landlord took their tenant to eviction court, even though a lot of landlords, they're not filing right now. Well, they had good reason to take this tenant to eviction court and this tenant owes them a lot of money but they yet they were still willing to work with the tenant if the tenant had communicated with them, something that the tenant did not do. So it's no surprise that the only way that they could get this person's attention was by taking them to court. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think, okay? When it comes to California in particular, right? What do you think is worse? Do you think uh, Southern California, like Los Angeles area, or San Francisco area in terms of tenant protections? Which one is the worst place? I, I honestly think that they are both pretty bad, but I think San Francisco tops LA in this, in this particular topic okay so i did a poll just recently where i asked what is the worst state on the west coast in your opinion uh for being a landlord right and overwhelmingly it was california so i'll probably create a poll that asks the same thing but in terms of within california what is the worst metropolitan area to be a landlord and probably you know i'm gonna throw on there los angeles san francisco and san diego just the big three so <laughs> you know obviously you know one of those three is going to be the worst in my opinion it's san francisco based on what i've read but you know let's see what you guys think so uh, this article is coming from missionlocal.org and it says, few go to eviction court for COVID-19 debt. Where is the humanity? An almost 70 year old goes to court over eviction proceedings for COVID-19 rent debt. Yeah, in this article, it goes over this kind of hard luck story of this tenant, right? And, you know, they actually do get around to talking to the landlord and the landlord has some interesting insights about the whole situation. So let's get into it. Just shy of his 70th birthday, Cedric Duggar is wondering if he will be homeless again. The six foot four inch tall man stood outside his apartment building at 601 O'Farrell Street Monday and his hands trembling told reporters how he fell behind on rent during the pandemic and will head to eviction court Tuesday. I don't know what to say, said Duggar, his voice breaking. Where is the humanity? How, he said, is it going to benefit them to put another person on the street? As the last of statewide COVID-19 eviction protections expire, Duggar appears to be one of a small group of tenants who are being taken to eviction court over pandemic debt, organizers said. Although landlords are giving tenants eviction warnings, organizers said few cases do make it to the more serious stage of court. Yeah, they've basically made it so hard for landlords to take their tenants to court for any of this, you know, eviction or non-payment of rent or any of that, that most of them just aren't doing it. In fact, landlords in San Francisco area, from what I've read, in order to get tenants out of their units, they are paying them, okay? The exact opposite of eviction. No, we won't file eviction on you. In fact, here's 20 grand, now please leave, <laughs> okay? That's how crazy it is there in San Francisco. <clears throat> Despite concerns of massive eviction cliffs, it appears that rent relief, anti-eviction groups, and the landlord's decision not to go to court have so far kept San Franciscans in their homes. But for the few who are facing eviction proceedings, like Duggar, the fear of ending up on the streets is real. Duggar recalled when he used to sleep on cardboard 
at uh, Fisherman's Wharf years ago and cajole folks into giving him money with a funny sign, but it would be harsher now. I would be on the streets again at 70 years old, he told Mission Local. I can't even imagine that. You see what the people on the street are like. At Monday's conference, the Duggar, um, the Duggar launched into a series of impassioned but rambling speeches, which organizers gently interrupted. So yeah, this guy obviously, you know, he was previously homeless. You know, he it doesn't sound like he's all there mentally, right? And so, fortunately, they were able to get him up off of the streets. But he owes his landlord a great deal of money. Okay, and that is a, a problem, no matter who it is. Now, I'm not saying that hey, this guy needs to be thrown out on the streets, but we need to figure out a solution for this, right? And if this guy is, you know, elderly receiving social security or disability or something, right? And he's not able to manage his money correctly in order to pay his bills, then maybe he needs someone else to help him with that, okay? Duggar explained that he has depression and other ailments. Not surprised. He has lived at 601 O'Farrell for 13 years and says the building's odd interior of rough textured walls evokes a Flintstones cartoon. Walking through it makes him smile. A series of misfortunes caused him to accrue debt, including a $200 cut to his disability checks, costly treatments for physical and mental health issues, and depleted savings. He now owes $8,000.15 to Veridas Properties, uh, his landlord. So yeah. It looks like, you know, obviously he, you know, he did receive a cut to his disability check. That is unfortunate. But the thing is, right, that is not the fault of his landlord. OK, it is not the fault that uh, of the, his landlord that he received a decrease in how much he gets paid. And they are not a social housing provider. So that means that, hey, guess what? Rent still do. Rent is still due. Everyone goes through different situations at different times of their lives, right? Maybe a spouse or a partner passes away. Maybe they, you know, get injured on the job. You know, maybe they just received a pay cut or they have to change jobs and they get paid less at their new job. But you still have to pay your bills regardless of what happened. And yeah, I am sympathetic to your situation. However, remember we're running a business here and just like you know if you you go down to you know if you buy a car and you you lose your job or you lose some of your income well guess what they will come and you know repossess your car and you still owe your car payment regardless of what happened to you financially so expecting something different from landlords is dumb Veritas called the court proceeding Tuesday a settlement conference and not an eviction, and Monday's press, press conference unnecessary, according to a statement from Veritas COO Jeff Jordan. The company reached out to Duggar about the debt as recently as May 25th with no response. So yeah, now we're starting to hear from the landlord, okay? So the, the landlord, the company is called Veritas, right? And they said they reached out to this guy on May 25th, right? And this article, let me see what the date on this article is. It's from July 12th, so it's only from less than a week ago, right? So it's been almost two months, you know, they reached out to this guy, no response. And, you know, if he's not, if he's in such a horrible position he needs to let the landlord know regardless of if it's a big corporation or not maybe they'll be willing to work with you if you talk to them they shouldn't have to take you to court because you know what that is ridiculous that is the last resort even in more you know landlord friendly places like nebraska okay that is the last resort we don't want to have to take you to court because we have to pay lawyers hundreds or thousands of dollars every time we go to court Jordan said Veritas is happy to work with Mr. Duggar and resolve this and has responded to Supervisor Dean Preston's pleas to address the issue. Duggar noted that Veritas management proposed a $500 discount for his base rent of $2,100. We will work with residents who have COVID related issue or other extraordinary situations, uh, Jordan continued. Our goal is to keep residents in their homes. Yeah, and look, look at that right there. Okay, so he received a $200, you know, cut to his disability, but the company actually proposed a $500 discount to his rent just to keep him in there. 
okay? That is a good landlord, okay? They wanted to keep this guy in there. They weren't trying to get him, you know, kicked back out on the street and all that. Yet, here we go. We write this article and they were telling him, well, why are they taking him to court? Well, why are they taking him to court? Because he still owes them money, okay? And he didn't respond to their, their pleas. And the only way you could get this guy's attention was by taking him to court. That, it's ridiculous, but that is the way it works, okay? And this guy, you know, he's got mental health issues. He's got other things going on, and that might be why he didn't respond. But that is not the fault of the landlord. That's what I, I keep saying. They blame landlords for everything, you know, for the homelessness issue, for, you know, uh, inflation. It is not our fault. We are, you know, just existing within the free market. And guess what? Things happen. So we have to run our businesses just like every other business has to run theirs. So I'm going to skip down a little bit in here because it goes into why this guy didn't receive any uh, rent relief from the rental assistance program. And it says, Duggar did not register for state or local rent relief in part because he is not technologically savvy, he said. Indeed, the rent relief program proved difficult to navigate for thousands of Californians and the state housing department received a discrimination complaint for its inaccessibility. Thousands of others had applications denied. So yeah, if this guy had accumulated that debt during the pandemic due to, you know, um, COVID-19 related hardship, then he might have qualified for rental assistance from the state or the federal government or whoever was providing it, right? But he didn't even apply. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, hey, right now, the, you know, he's not even truly being evicted. What it sounds like is they're just suing him trying to, you know, work out a payment plan so that they can get repaid the money that he owes them. So yeah, this, this is a ridiculous article. You know, they tried to paint the landlord with a bad image. The landlord actually responded, you know, told their side of the story. And guess what? They're a good landlord, just like most landlords are, just like I've always said. And so once again, you know, ridiculous story coming out of San Francisco, California.